Welcome back to my trips from Tokyo series. I hope you guys enjoyed exploring with me in part one because guess what? I'm back for part two now. So come along with me as we explore more hidden gems and get off the beaten path. We've got the mountains on one side and then the sea on the other. There's all these different paths that lead to different places. Just like in life, but you know what? It all gets you somewhere and you'll be fine at the end. Good morning. So I woke up today just in time to see the sunrise and it was so beautiful. You know what I love most about mornings is the sounds. The sound of the birds, the sound of the train going by. It's just so quiet that you hear everything and I love it. So let's get the morning started and I can't wait to bring you guys along with me while I explore today. In the morning, I decided to check out Kozu, which is only a few train stops away from Odawara Station. Kozu is a coastal town and I felt this very relaxed atmosphere as soon as I stepped out of the station. Next, I walked around the back streets and stumbled across many cobblestone paths like this one. It was really neat and it kind of made me feel like I was inside a maze. On my walks, I love exploring the back streets, seeing the houses and just people going about with their everyday lives. On my walk, I stumbled across this local market. The owner of this renovated warehouse told me that he organizes different events every week to bring together the community and allow them to have something new to look forward to in their hometown. During this particular event, there were many local goods for sale, but the thing I found most interesting was that a lot of the stores were unstaffed. Yes, you heard me right. So you put in the money yourself and you even get out the change yourself. And according to the owner, there hasn't been any problems in the past year that he's been running these. Next, I saw a hill behind the station, so I thought it would be a good idea to go up there and see if there's a nice view. We're gonna walk up this hill and see the view from there. Hey guys, what are you, what are you eating over there? Oh my gosh just at someone's house and they put this up here. Cool, this area really trusts people with money. There are some pretty interesting people. This colorful house doesn't even look like a Japanese house, especially with the car there. Okay, let's do this. I'm ready. Oh wow, they also have seats here. Perfect. I can take a rest here and enjoy the view. Trying to look for the place we stayed at, but I think somewhere around here. Why do you look so mean? After walking up all those stairs, you need to reward yourself for something, right? So let's go grab a bite. Now we can't explore on an empty stomach, especially if we're gonna cycle in the afternoon, so it's time to fuel up. After lunch, we decided to get our bikes and cycle to a hidden temple. I wanted to cycle along the river and thought I might as well just visit the temple as well. However, the ride was over an hour long, so I would recommend you guys to take the train to the temple instead and maybe just cycle around the river for a little bit, but not an hour like me. If you come in spring, these trees will be beautiful cherry blossom trees. That's where we're headed, off to the mountains. 
past lots of these cool bridges. So pretty, especially the clouds. Wow. Wow, just keeps on going and going. So after cycling for more than an hour, we decided to just take the bus from the station to the temple instead. And thank God we took the bus because it was just a pure straight uphill from the station. What I thought was really cool about this temple was that it was surrounded completely by nature and there was nothing else in the area except for the temple itself. Japan has a lot of temples and shrines all around the country, so if you've been living in Japan for 6 years like I have, they can start to look pretty similar. So usually what I like to do before I visit a temple or a shrine is I like to read about the history and the background story behind it. So when I go, I can imagine I was back in that time. Before it got dark, we cycled back to Odawara station for dinner, but of course you can also take the train too. A local I met at the morning market recommended me this restaurant to go to for dinner. For dinner, we will be having oden to warm ourselves up from all that riding. Oden consists of various ingredients simmered in a soy-flavoured light dashi broth. And did I mention it's also very delicious? those like aesthetic shots you see on YouTube but it's really hard when you're just by yourself and you don't have a tripod so I am using a tissue box on top of a cup but you know improvise that's okay I found this really cool magazine well it's not really a magazine like paper magazine and I just wanted to share something with you so go forth drunkenly where's the fun in doing the obvious Let's make something that's never been. Shine a new light on an ancient history. You like Japanese sake? Think fermentation's neat? That's a good place to start. But we don't just want to make sake. We want to make the kind of good times that only sake can bring. Come to Seto Brewery and have fun. Feel good. Meet people. Talk. Connect. That's the kind of brewery we want to be. But we don't have to get there on the straight and narrow. We can be a little loose, a little tipsy, with a little stagger in our step. We'll go forth drunkenly. So I thought that was quite neat and I just wanted to share it with you guys. But that's a wrap on this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below what you thought and I will see you in the next one. Bye!